Good evening to everyone. Once again, thank you for uh, taking the time and the opportunity to tune in uh, tonight, 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 tonight. You know, I, I'm convinced that God is nothing like us. Now, it just depends on whether you want to believe that truth or not, but there's nothing that God does the way that we do. So tonight, I want you to prepare your minds and your hearts, rather, your hearts, to move to a place that is completely foreign to where you abide. Because tonight the Lord is, is just sharing with us and delivering us, delivering us. When Jesus said the truth set you free, it does. It sets you free. So tonight I just want you to get your pen and your paper and just be prepared because the greatness of God is made manifest in his understanding. Amen. So I'm just I'm just excited about the word because it's it's something that I had been asking God for so long. And finally he comes through. And when he does, it's just mind blowing. So uh, get your pen and your paper. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. And we're just going to need one verse. Isaiah chapter 60. And we're just going to need one verse. I don't even think we're going to be that long unless the Lord decides he wants to go uh, a little deeper. But to me, it's already deep. But Isaiah chapter 60, and uh, we're just going to read one verse. But first, let's pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to commune with you. God, now come in and sup with us. These are your people, Lord. You know their hearts, their minds, their concerns, their desires, their fears, their anxieties, God. You know all of the answers that they need for you alone, God, can speak to them according to your knowledge of the contents of their heart. Do what only you can do, God, and speak to them right now. And God, we bless you, and we praise you, and extol you as a true and living God, a holy and righteous God. We bless you right now. In the resurrected name of your Christ, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Isaiah chapter 60, just one verse, verse number 16. Isaiah chapter 60, just one verse, verse number 16. Listen to what it says. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of kings. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. I'm going to say it one more time. Verse 16, Isaiah 60, 16. Listen. <clears throat> thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of kings. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Amen. This is what I want to talk to you about tonight. The hour, the hour of surety. The hour of surety. And before I move any forward, let me, let me speak to something that will help you out real quick. You know, one of the greatest things that you hear is people want to be sure about God. Are you understanding? They want to be sure about God. And I need you to understand that surety is a benefit given to the faithful. Surety, sureness, surety, it is a benefit given to the faithful. So it is something that God reserves for the faithful because it allows them to commune with him in a new way as opposed to an old relationship. So let, let me, I just want to make sure we get this before we move forward. Because what you hear a lot is I just want to be sure. I just want to be sure. Surety belongs to the righteous. It is righteousness. It is a sign of the Lord's delight in you. Surety, sureness. It is a sign of the Lord's delight in you. So now listen to verse number 16. Listen, and this is to the remnant. I need you to get this. Write this down. This is good. This is so that you may be delivered from the bondage of the lies concerning the Lord that you presently trust in. And through seeing or through manifestation, set your heart on the righteousness of heaven. 
Please understand, that's what this is about. This is the heart of God. Verse number 16, this is the heart of God towards his servant, the prophet. And understand, his heart towards him is this. He needs you to understand what it looks like when the Lord delights in you. Purposeful, so that you are not deceived and that you can set your heart on the truth. And the heart of the Lord towards his servant at this time is his heart is to be glorified in him. And to be glorified in a servant is for the Lord, according to his authority working in that servant's life, to cause people to plainly or clearly or be sure that the authority of heaven abides with him. The purpose of glorifying you is to cause people to be sure or to make it plain or make it clear that the authority of heaven abides with you. That's the purpose of glorifying you. It is to cause people to be sure that the authority of heaven abides with you. And let's get into the scripture. Listen to it now. Listen, listen carefully tonight. It is important that you listen tonight. Listen, listen to the scripture. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am. Listen to this. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am. Understand it. Listen to this. To everything under the heaven, there is a time and a season and a purpose to everything that the Lord does at an appointed time. And at this appointed time, listen, because this is that the remnant may be delivered through manifested truth from the bondage of the lies that they presently trust in and set their heart on righteousness. And listen to the Lord, and you shall know that I, the Lord, am. And the Lord says to his servant, the prophet, at this time, the time has come for you to know that I am your God. Or the appointed time has come for him to manifest himself to his servant for the purpose of establishing himself as his God. Please understand, he says, the time has come. I was talking to my mama today. I asked her, what do you hear? And she didn't hear what I heard. I said, listen again, listen. Listen to the scripture. And you shall know that I, the Lord, am. Simply the Lord says to him, the time has come for you to know that I am your God. Or the appointed time has come for the Lord to manifest himself to him, to establish himself as his God. Understand, and the purpose is this, to, to give him confidence or to strengthen his faith in knowing that the authority of heaven abides with him to prosper all of the works of his hand. Hear me when I say this to you. When the Lord is sent to establish himself as your God, the purpose is to strengthen your faith or give you confidence in knowing that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all of the works of your hand. Listen to this. To be your God means to give you the help of heaven or the authority of heaven to prosper all of the works of your hand that he may be glorified in you. That's what it means to be your God. To be your God is for the Lord to give to you the help of heaven or the authority of heaven to prosper all of the works of your hand that he may be glorified in you. Let me give you a few witnesses so you understand this. First place we're going to go is Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Listen. Watch now. Verse 13 and 14. Listen to what it says. And it shall come to pass if you shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, 
to love the Lord your God, to serve him with all of your heart and with all of your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season. See, listen, he will give you the help of heaven or the authority of heaven at his appointed time. That's why the scripture says to you that the blessings of the Lord will overtake you because God's timing is not your timing. And when God is prepared to give you the help of heaven or the authority of heaven to prosper all of the works of your hands, it's sudden and it doesn't happen in your timing. Let me keep establishing this. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Listen now, listen. Verse 12. The Lord shall open unto you his good treasure to give the rain unto your land in his season. And I know some people are going, well, how's that help, prophet? I'm going to show you in a minute. Hold on. Watch. The Lord shall open unto you his good treasure to heaven to give you the rain of heaven. All the rain of heaven is is the Lord commanding the angels to come down and prosper the works of your hand. That's all the rain of heaven is. It's God commanding. Okay, I'm going to make it plain for you. What does it say? The Lord shall open unto you his good treasure to heaven to give the rain unto your, seed, unto your land in his season to bless all the work of your hand. Okay, you heard him say, open the heaven and give you rain to prosper all of the work of your hand to be your God means to give you the help of heaven or the authority of heaven to prosper all of the works of your hand. Now watch this. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. The gospel of John chapter 1. Listen. Listen to the prophet. Listen to what he says. Listen to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Listen. John chapter 1. He's teaching. Verse number 51. And he said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus clearly defines what an open heaven is. It's God giving him the help of heaven to prosper all of the works of his hand. I'm going to say this again to you. To be your God is to give you the help of heaven to prosper all of the works of your hand. That's the purpose of giving you or opening the heavens to you. It is to be your God and give you the help of heaven to prosper the works of your hand. Let me give you a few more witnesses concerning the help of heaven and the authority of heaven. What it means to be your God is to give you the help of heaven or the authority of heaven to prosper all the works of your hand. Uh, next place, Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. I, I just got a real good one in my head. I'm going to go back to it in a minute. Second Chronicles 32. Second Chronicles 32. Second Chronicles 32. Listen to this. Listen. This is Hezekiah talking. Verse 8. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us. Wait a minute. With us is the Lord our God. To be our God is to help us. That's what it means to be your God. It is to give you the help of heaven or the authority of heaven to prosper all the works of your hand. Are you following me? Come on, I got a couple more witnesses. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41, verse number 10. Listen. Listen. Fear thou not. For I am with thee, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Yes, I will strengthen thee. Yes, I will help thee. So once again, what does it mean to be your God? It means to give you the help of heaven or the authority of heaven to prosper all of the works of your hand. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Last place. Well, I got two more places. I'm gonna skip over. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna skip over Isaiah 50, and I'm gonna go somewhere. I'm gonna go to Zechariah chapter four. While I was going through it, it came, and I was like, "That's it, God. That's it right there." Listen, watch. Listen to this. Zechariah chapter four, verse number nine. I'm gonna make it real plain for you. Listen to what it says. The hands of the Rubabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. 
and you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. Listen, for who has despised the day of small thing? For they shall rejoice, and they shall see. Circle the word see. And they shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. What they will see is they will see. I, I don't want to get into this too deep, but I'm just going to tell you. The seven spirits that stand before the throne of God, those are the spirits that the Lord commands to prosper the work, all of the works of the hand of a servant in whom he delights. Listen to the scripture. For they shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. So understand, the Lord commands the seven spirits that stand before his throne to prosper all the works of the hands of a servant in whom he delights. That is the help of heaven. That is the authority of heaven. Prospering the works of your hand for the purpose of God establishing himself as your God. To be your God means to give you the help of heaven to prosper all of the works of your hand. Where do you think David gets the expression from? And he shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of water. And whatsoever he is that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, and whatsoever he doeth, listen it, shall prosper. Is that not all of the works of his hand? He's telling you that when the Lord establishes himself as your God, he gives you the help of heaven to prosper all of the works of your hand. So listen to the Lord. I'm going back to Isaiah 61. He says to his servant, the prophet, I need you to know that I am your God. The purpose is to strengthen and cause him to be confident in knowing. Somebody say knowledge. Knowing. Knowing that the authority of heaven abides with him to prosper all of the works of of his hand, the purpose of establishing himself or causing him to know that he is his God is to strengthen his faith in knowing that the authority of heaven abides with him to prosper all of the works of his hand. When it is time for the Lord to establish himself as your God, he will strengthen your faith in knowing that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all of the works of your hand. When it comes time for him to be your God, where he strengthens, you know how you hear, I, I said this today to somebody, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Well, watch, you are strengthened in knowing that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all of the works of your hand. What God strengthens your faith in when he becomes your God is knowing. Here's the surety, and I'm about to get into it in a minute. Here's the surety you have. You are sure that the authority of heaven is with you, abides with you to prosper all the works of your hand. Let me give you a few witnesses. Let's go back to Isaiah 41. Let's go back to Isaiah 41. Watch. This is about strengthening. Hallelujah. Strengthening your faith that the authority of heaven. He says, listen, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be thou dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen you. What will you strengthen him in? I'm going to strengthen your faith for your confidence in knowing that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all the works of your hand. One other, watch this another place. I'm going to just, I'm, I'm just going to give two witnesses on this one. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Watch. Watch. Revelation chapter 3. Listen. Revelation chapter 3. Verse number 8. Listen to what it says. I know thy works. Behold, I've stepped before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. 
For thou has a little strength, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. For thou has a little strength. What is his faith lacking in? What does it need strengthening in? It needs strengthening in, in that knowing that the authority of heaven abides with him to prosper all the works of his hand. The open door is to strengthen his faith in knowing that the authority of heaven abides with him. Are you understanding? When it is God's set time to establish himself as your God, he strengthens your faith in knowing, hear this, in knowing that the authority of heaven or the help of heaven abides with you to prosper all the works of your hand. That's what God does when he establishes himself as your God. He establishes or he strengthens your confidence or your faith in knowing. So all of his actions toward you from that moment forward are about strengthening your faith in knowing that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all of the works of your hand. Let's go back. We're going to get into the deep. And it's going to answer your question. Listen now. Watch what he said. Thy Savior. Right? Circle the word thy Savior. Understand. Watch now. Teaching. Thy Savior. So when God establishes himself as your God, he does two things to establish himself as your God. Please understand this. You can't just call God your God. He must establish himself as your God. And the first thing that he does, listen to the scripture, thy Savior. I, the Lord, am thy Savior, your Savior. So, in order to establish himself as your God, the first thing that he does is this, is that he according to his authority working on your behalf, he delivers you out of the house of servants through commanding men to give you your prosperity. This is the first thing he does to establish himself as your God, is he saves you. He, by his authority working on your behalf, commands men to give you your prosperity for the purpose of delivering you from the house of servants and to establish himself as your God. The purpose, listen to this, the purpose is to give you evidence that he is your God and that the authority of heaven abides with you. Let me teach you something. You need evidence that he is your God. And to establish himself as your God, he gives you evidence. And the first thing he does is he saves you. And how he saves you is he commands men to bring you your prosperity and deliver you out of the house of servants. What is the purpose of saving you? What is the purpose of causing men to bring you your prosperity, that you may have evidence that he is your God and that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all of the works of your hand. Let me give you a couple of witnesses. Watch this. Watch. Isaiah, I'm going to go to, you know, you know what? I'm going to go to Isaiah 49, and then I'm going to go to Genesis. Listen to Isaiah 49. Watch now. Listen. Verse 23, kings shall be your nursing fathers, and queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of your feet. Watch. What's the next two words? And you shall know. You shall have knowledge. You shall have knowledge that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed to wait for me. So what is the purpose of commanding men to bring you your prosperity? It is to give you knowledge that I am your God and that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper 
all of the works of your hand. God, when he establishes himself as your God, he gives you evidence that he's your God. And how does he give you evidence? He gives you evidence through commanding men to bring you your prosperity. Let me, let me teach you something real good. When the prosperity is coming to you, it's not about making you rich. It's about giving you knowledge. What is of more value is that he is your God than the riches. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? What is of more value is the knowledge that he is your God. Are you hearing me? When the prosperity is coming, it's only coming to give you knowledge, to give you evidence that he is your God. Are you understanding? To be your God, God has to give you evidence that he's your God. I'm, 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 I got a couple more witnesses. I got a couple more witnesses. And then I'm going to move on to something else. Watch, 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 watch. Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. Watch, watch. Isaiah chapter 60. Verse number 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The purpose for the nation and the kingdom serving you is to give you evidence that he is your God. And strengthen your faith or your confidence in the knowledge that the authority of heaven abides with you. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? God, when he, to be your God, he saves you. But the purpose of saving you is to give you evidence that he is your God. And strengthen your faith and your confidence in the knowledge that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all of the works of your hand. To establish himself as your God, the first thing that the Lord does is save you. And the purpose of saving you is to give you the evidence. Hear me. Watch. The evidence that he is your God and that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all of the works of your hand. Let me take you to Genesis chapter 20. Watch Genesis chapter 20. Let me show you how it plays itself out. Watch. So now listen. Verse number 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night, said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Verse 7. Now therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. He shall pray for thee. And thou shalt live, and if not, thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Verse 8, therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ears, and the men were so afraid. Look at verse 14. And Abimelech took sheep, oxen, men servants, woman servants, and gave them unto Abraham. He gave them unto Abraham. He gave them unto Abraham at the commandment of the Lord. So in Abimelech giving Abraham the men servants, the maid servant, the sheep and the cattle, Abraham had evidence that God was his God and that the authority of heaven abided with him to prosper all of the works of his hand. The Lord commanded the king to give to him purposefully. And the purpose was that Abraham could see that God was his God. He had evidence that God was his God. And he also had evidence that the authority of heaven abided with him to prosper all of the works of his hand. God has to give you evidence that he is your God. You just can't be calling God your God because it sounds good to you. Do you not understand how great of an honor it is for the Lord to desire to be your God? And he purposes to give you evidence that he is your God to cause you and all around you to be sure. The purpose of the evidence is to cause you to be sure that he is your God. And that anything you do in his name it will prosper because the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all of the works of your 
your hand. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? You go through the scripture, you look at it. Come on, let's go back. Let's go back. Watch this. Next thing. And thy redeemer. Secondly, listen now. The second thing the Lord does to establish himself as your God is he redeems you. Understand, the second thing that he does, God does two things to establish himself as your God. The first thing he does is he saves you. And to save you is to command men to bring you your prosperity, to deliver you from the house of servants, to give you evidence that he is your God and that the authority of heaven abides with you. The second thing that the Lord does to establish himself, these are the things he's going to do in the life of his servant, the prophet, to establish himself as his God. The second thing he's going to do is to redeem him. And what does redemption mean? To redeem you means to do this. It is for the Lord, by his authority, through great judgments, to bring you out of the house of servants, with great, and by great judgments to bring you out of the house of servants with great substance. Redemption is the Lord exercising his authority through great judgments. It is him exercising his authority through judgment on behalf of his servant to bring him out of the house of servants with great substance. What does that mean? That means for the, this is why you need a prophet to redeem. Because he executes the judgment of heaven that the redeemed may see the judgment of heaven. And when that judgment manifests itself, they now have evidence that God is their God and that the authority of heaven abides with them. What the Lord does is he calls by name the king or in whom he will judge to give to the redeemed that which he commands. When that king gives you what the Lord said he should give you, you now have evidence that the authority of heaven to prosper all of the works of your hand abides with you, and that he is your God and that there is none else like him. To redeem you is to give you an understanding that there is none else that has authority like your God. Are you hearing what I'm teaching you? The second thing he does to establish himself as your God is to redeem you, meaning he exercises his authority through great judgment. So he judges a king. And he tells you, this is why he has a prophet, because the prophet executes the judgment of heaven that you may know it. And when God performs that judgment, then you have evidence that he is your God and that the authority of heaven abides with you and that there is none else that has authority like your God. That's why when he judges, he judges great men, and he judges them by commanding them to give you said prosperity. He calls it by name. Let me just show it to you. Watch. Let me show it to you. Let me show you what redemption looks like. Watch. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. Verse 14. Now understand. Look now. It's in Isaiah, so the prophet would execute the judgment. Executing it means showing you the judgment of heaven for the purpose that when it manifests, you will know that he is your God and the authority of heaven abides with you. Listen to it. Thus said the Lord, the labor of Egypt. So understand, the king of Egypt would have to give you your labor. When you see your labor come from the king of Egypt, then you have evidence that God is your God 
and that the ju that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all of the works of your hand to redeem you is for God to exercise his authority through great judgment and bring you out of the house of servants with great substance. So he exercises his authority in judging Egypt. And the judgment that he renders against Egypt on your behalf is that Egypt has to give you labor. And the purpose of giving you that labor is to bring you out of the house of servants with great substance. So when you see the kingdom of Egypt give you labor according to the great judgment of heaven executed by his servant, the prophet, you now have evidence that the Lord is your God and that the authority of heaven abides with you. The purpose of redemption is to teach you that there is none else on earth that has authority like your God. When God establishes himself as your God, he not just establishing himself as your God. He's also establishing that there is none else that has authority like your God. That's why. why. How do you think we get this? How do you think we get this? Watch. How do you think this is the full? Watch. Redemption is the fulfillment of this scripture. Listen. The remnant of Israel. This is Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 13. Listen. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies. Neither shall the deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Well, why should none make them afraid? Because they will have evidence through redemption that there is none else that has authority like the Lord. That's why the Lord, when he redeems you, he judges great men. Because it is through judging those great men that he gives you evidence, not only that he is your God, but also that there is none else that has authority like your God. Are you understanding? That's the purpose of redeeming you. It's not just to establish himself as your God, but it is also to give you a confidence and evidence that there is none else that has authority like your God. Let me give you a couple more witnesses. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 60. Watch now. Watch. Listen. Listen. To redeem you is for the Lord. Understand now. To exercise his authority through great judgment and bring you out of the house of servants with great substance for the purpose of establishing that he is your God, giving you evidence that he is your God and that there is none else that has authority like your God that you should fear no man. Watch. Watch. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 6. Listen. The multitude of camels, listen to God, this is redemption, shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. So all of the camels of Midian and Ephah, they shall come to you. From Sheba shall come. Listen, they shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. So, to redeem you is to call by name what king or what great man is going to give you your substance. The purpose is that you have, at the manifestation, you have evidence that God is your God. And that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all the works of your hand. And that there is none else that has authority like your God. In redeeming you, it causes you to know the greatness of the God that you have been serving. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? In redemption, God causes you to know the greatness of the God that...
that you have been serving. Remember what God told Abram? He said to Abram, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. The reward is not the prosperity. The reward is knowledge. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? The reward is knowledge. The wealth and the riches give you knowledge that he is your God and that the authority of heaven abides with you. But it also gives you knowledge that there is none else that has authority like the Lord your God. It allows you to know the greatness of the God that you have been serving. Somebody say amen. Amen. Come on, watch now. Watch, watch, watch. Let's go to verse number nine. We're still dealing with redeeming you. To establish himself as your God, God only does two things. He saves you and he redeems you. Are you hearing me? And to redeem you. Watch now. We're in chapter Isaiah 60. And remember, to redeem you, he does it through a prophet. That the prophet may show you the judgment of heaven. That at the manifestation of that judgment, you have the evidence that God is your God. And that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all of the works of your hand. Let's make sure we understand this. You need evidence that God is your God. That's the purpose of redeeming you. But also the purpose of redeeming you is to bring you into the knowledge of the greatness of the God that you serve. The reward of the faithful is they know the greatness of the God that they serve and they know truly that there is none else that has authority like their God. Are you understanding? Listen now. Listen, verse number nine. Surely, Isaiah 69. Surely. So now listen now. Watch. 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 I want you to see this. Are you looking at verse number nine? Because look, good, look. Surely the isles shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them unto the name of the Lord thy God. Stop. Look, to be your God is to cause others to surely know that he is with you. Are you listening? It's right there. To be your God. Listen now. Watch. Is to cause others to surely know that he is your God. Listen now. Surely, Tarshish is going to come first. And they're going to bring your sons and, your, and their gold. So now understand, in redemption, he, through great judgment, brings you out of the house of servants with great substance. So he judges Tarshish. And when he judges them, the judgment heaven renders is that they have to give you sons and gold. When you see the sons and the gold come according to the judgment that was shown you through his servant, the prophet, you now have evidence that God is your God and that the authority of heaven abides with you. When the Lord establishes you as his, establish himself as your God, redemption is merely nothing more than God showing you your covenant. And he shows you your covenant that you may have evidence at its manifestation that he is your God and that there is none else that has authority like your God. Last place. Watch. I'm going to say this again. To be your God, God has to give you evidence that he is your God. Let me show you. Joel chapter 2. Then we're going to move on to the next part. Joel chapter 2. Listen now. Listen. Listen. Verse 26. I could go up. I could, you know what? Can we back up? Can we back up? Let's back up. Verse 24. And the floor shall be full of wheat, the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years the locusts have eaten, 
the canker worm, the caterpillar, the pummel worm, my great army which I send among you. Listen now. Listen. The floor is going to be shipped full of wheat. The vats going to overflow with wine and oil. 26. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wonders with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Listen to verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He gives you evidence that he is your God. He first, right here, reveals to you the judgment of heaven to prosper you. Or he shows you the covenant as the manifestation of the judgment that has been made, has been shown to you by his servant, the prophet. As the manifestation, you now have evidence that he is your God that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all of the works of your hand, and that there is none else that has authority like your God. I'm going to say it again. To establish himself as your God, the Lord does two things. He saves you and he redeems you. The purpose of redeeming you is to, establish, to give you evidence through judgment, through showing you the judgment of heaven to prosper you, that you may know at its manifestation that he is your God. It's to give you evidence that he is your God and that the authority of heaven abides with you. Somebody say amen. Come on, let's keep going. Watch now. Watch. Verse number, let's keep going. This is what it says. The mighty one of Jacob. Now listen, this is good. The mighty one of Jacob. So when the Lord saves you, and when he redeems you, it signifies or establishes. This is how heaven sees saving you. Because understand, to establish covenant with you is to save you and redeem you. When the Lord saves you and he redeems you, he it signifies or establishes that he has chosen you as his servant and that the authority of heaven abides with you. Listen to it. The mighty one of. So I'm saving you and redeeming you to signify or establish you as my servant and that the authority of heaven abides with you. Understand, when the Lord saves you, and when he redeems you, it's a sign or it establishes you as his servant and him as your God. It signifies that he has chosen you as his servant and that the authority of heaven abides with you. What's the purpose for saving you? What's the purpose for redeeming you? It is to establish that he's chosen you as his servant and that the authority of heaven abides with you. In saving you and in redeeming you, he's glorifying you. In glorifying you, he is establishing that the authority of heaven abides with you and that he has chosen you as his servant. Let me give you some witnesses. Watch this. Watch, 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 watch. Because I'm going to show you something. You've been reading it all these years, just never understood it. Watch. 2 Samuel chapter 12. I mean, 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 12. Watch this. Watch. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. Listen, listen. And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David. Cedar trees, carpenters, and masons, and they built David a house. Listen. And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people. Israel's sake. And David perceived that the Lord had established him king. How did the Lord establish him king? The people saw the Lord save David and redeem David and establish that the authority of heaven abided with him. The people saw the Lord save David. They saw the Lord redeem David and establish that the authority of heaven abided with him 
and that God was his God. When God establishes him, establishes his servant, all he does is in the presence of people, he saves him and he redeems him to establish that the authority of heaven abides with him and that he is his God. How does God establish you as his servant? He saves you and he redeems you in the presence of others to signify that the authority of heaven abides with you and that he is your God. Watch, watch. Let me get another witness. First Chronicles, first Chronicles, first Chronicles. How many times when you saw that the Lord established him as king, did you understand what it took to establish him as king? What it takes to establish him as king? The Lord did it. And if the Lord established him as king, he established him as his servant. And if he established him as his servant, then he established himself as his God. And if he established himself as his God, then in the presence of the people, they saw the Lord save him and they saw him redeem him and establish himself as his God and establish that the authority of heaven abided with him and that heaven through saving him and redeeming him had chosen him as his servant and the authority of heaven abided with him. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? Watch, watch. It gets good. First Chronicles 29. Watch this. It gets real good. It gets real good. Listen to this. Verse 25. First Chronicles 25. And the Lord magnified Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel. What's the, wait, what is the purpose of magnifying him? And what does magnify mean? It means to cause people to clearly see through the authority of heaven working in his life that the authority of heaven abides with him. So when he said he magnified him in the sight of all Israel, big word, sight, circle it. What did they see the Lord do in his life? They saw the Lord save him. They saw the Lord redeem him. And through saving him and redeeming him, the Lord established that he had chosen him as his servant and that the authority of heaven abided with him. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? When he magnified him in their sight, what did they see? They saw the Lord save him. They saw the Lord redeem him. And through saving him and redeeming him, the Lord signified or established that he had chosen him as his servant and that the authority of heaven abides with him. When the Lord establishes you in the presence of people, what do they see? They see the Lord save you. They see the Lord redeem you. And through saving you and through redeeming you, he chooses and establishes you as his servant. And that the authority of heaven abides with you. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? Come on, I got to keep going. I got, I got even more. Watch, watch, watch. Second Chronicles 17. Second Chronicles 17. Watch, man. Watch. 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 Second Chronicles 17. The mighty one of Jacob is God saving and redeeming the one that he has chosen as his servant and establishing that the authority of heaven abides with him. He's no watch. He redeems Jacob and he glorifies himself in Israel. So when he redeems Jacob, he establishes that the authority of heaven abides with him. Once he establishes that the authority of heaven abides with him, he is no longer Jacob, but he is now Israel because the authority of heaven abides with him. Israel is he with whom the authority of heaven abides. He redeems Jacob. And once he redeems Jacob through saving him, and redeeming him. He now establishes him as Israel, as one with whom the authority of heaven abides. Are you getting it? He redeems Jacob, but is glorified in Israel. But redemption 
establishes that the authority of heaven abides with Jacob, and now Jacob becomes Israel, one with whom the authority of heaven abides. When the Lord establishes you, he causes people to see him save you and redeem you, and through saving you and redeeming you, he establishes that he has chosen you as his servant, and the authority of heaven abides with you. And now you begin to walk in the honor of being established as a servant of the Lord. Watch. Second Chronicles 17. Second Chronicles 17. Listen. Listen. Verse 4. But sought to the Lord God of his father and walked in his commandments and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore, the Lord established the kingdom in his hand and all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presents and he had riches and honor and abundance. So what did all Judah see the Lord do in the life of Jehoshaphat? They saw the Lord save him and redeem him. And in saving him and redeeming him, the Lord established himself as his God and that the authority of heaven abided with him. And now he was known as a servant of the Lord with whom the authority of heaven abided. Are you understanding? The Lord saves you. He redeems you. And through saving you and redeeming you, he has to do these two things. He can't just do one. He has to do them both. And what people see is him saving you and redeeming you. Saving you is causing men to bring you your prosperity and delivering you out of the house of service to give you, when you see them bringing you your prosperity, to give you evidence that he is your God and that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all of the works of your hand. He redeems you that you may see that you may see the judgment of heaven and that it be made manifest. And when it comes to you, you understand you now have evidence that he is your God, that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all the works of your hands and that there is none else like your God, which causes you to fear no man. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? I'm going to say it again. When you see that word, the Lord established, that means that he saved that individual. He redeemed that individual. And through saving him and redeeming him, he established that he had chosen them as his servant. And that the authority of heaven abides with them. And that now they are a servant of the Lord or they are Israel. He redeems Jacob. But he glorifies himself in Israel. And Jacob becomes Israel through the Lord establishing that the authority of heaven abides with him. Are you understanding? Let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. Watch this. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles and shall suck the breast of kings. Understand it. So now watch now. This is good. This is real good. Somebody say understanding. Listen. So this is about knowledge and strength. This is about knowledge and strength. This is how the Lord is going to give his servant, the prophet, knowledge that he is his God. Now, are you hearing me? Watch now, watch. This is how the Lord is going to give him knowledge and strengthen his confidence in his faith and knowing that the authority of heaven abides with him to prosper all of the works of his hand. Listen, this is how he's going to give him knowledge. So now watch, he understands this. Listen, this is how he's going to give him knowledge. It's going to be, he's going to cause him to grow. Understand, milk is growth. He's going to cause him to grow through giving him the wealth of those that don't believe in doing things 
God's way. Understand, in giving him the wealth, it's knowledge, it's evidence that he is his God. Listen, and he's very clear, what? Here's the redemption. He's very clear where that wealth is going to come from. And you shall suck the breast of kings. So therefore, understand that it's going to be men of great stature from whom the Lord is going to cause the wealth to flow. Are you hearing me? It's going to be from men of great stature that the Lord is going to cause the wealth to flow. So he's going to show his servant the judgment of these great men that he's commanded to give him wealth. And in showing him the judgment of the wealth that he's going to cause the flow, at the manifestation of the judgment, it is evidence that he is his God and to strengthen his faith in knowing that the authority of heaven abides with him. So when he sees God bring to fruition the judgment from said kings that will flow to him, he has the evidence that he is his God and that the authority of heaven abides with him to prosper all of the works of his hand. So understand, this is how God establishes himself as your God. He shows you covenant to give you evidence that he is your God and to cause you to be confident in the knowledge that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all the works of your hand. I'm going to say it again. He says, listen, I'm going to give you the wealth of those that don't believe in doing things my way. I'm going to cause it to flow. Are you understanding? I'm going to cause it to flow. The purpose is to give you knowledge, to give you knowledge that I am your God and that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all the works of your hand. Somebody say amen. Let me say this to you again, which is great about this. It's, it's simple. To be your God, God has to do two things. How does God establish himself as your God? He must do two things. He don't got to do a thousand. He just has to do two things. He has to save you, and he has to redeem you. And saving you and redeeming you gives you the evidence. I'm going to say this. You must have evidence that he is your God. You just don't call him your God. He gives you evidence that he is your God, which causes you to walk with a confidence according to the evidence that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all of the works of your hand. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Go back over it and, and go through it and, and look at it. But understand, the Lord came to his servant and said, I need you to know that I am your God. It's a need. It's a need to God. At this point, establishing himself as his God is a need. So understand, this is what he needs in the journey. But in fulfilling his need, remember, the Lord, exalted by his power, who teacheth like him. In supplying his need, he is also teaching him the truth about godliness. That God gives you evidence that he is your God. And in establishing himself as your God, he strengthens your faith in the knowledge that the authority of heaven abides with you to prosper all of the works of your hand. So now you understand that when you see the wealth of the Gentiles flowing from men that I've told you that I'm going to command to give you certain things, you now have evidence that I am your God 
and that the authority of heaven to prosper all the works of your hands abides with you. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. I thank God for his word. Go back over it. Listen to it again. Be sure. It's the truth. Go through your scripture. Every time you see the word established, that individual was saved and redeemed. Let me give you one plus now. Watch. Let me show you how important it is to God to redeem you. Because watch now. He wants to give you evidence. I'm just going to tell you where it is. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 62, 12. Go to it. You'll see. But just understand, he wants to be your redeemer, to give you evidence that he is your God. Somebody say amen. Come on, let's pray. God, we thank you for your word. We glorify you for everything that you said here tonight. God, we thank you that your heart is to be our Savior. We thank you that your heart is to be our Redeemer. But we glorify you, God, that your heart is to give us evidence to cause us to be sure that you are our God, that we might walk in confidence that the authority of heaven and having the knowledge that the authority of heaven is with us to prosper all the works of our hands. So we bless you. We thank you for your understanding. We give you glory right now. In the resurrected name of your Christ, we pray. Amen. Good night to everybody. Have a good evening.